All right, in this episode, I'm going to revisit my other video where I looked at open source, open weight models to see how good they would perform using my own uh, computer, um, but also just the fact they were private or open weight models, uh, even open source, some of them. Uh, in this one, though, we're going to see how well the newest model uh, that is open weight in that I can run on my own, uh, which happens to actually be from OpenAI, which a lot of people have talked about. Uh, so we're going to give that one a go and see how well it compares. All right, come join me as we test these out. What we're seeing here is a new contender, GPT OSS. This was released by OpenAI not too many days ago. And I want to run the 20B model. And the nice thing here is that supposedly it will do well with agentic capabilities and therefore might help us with some of the tool usage and just make that more consistent and just better overall. Hopefully with their uh, history of being good at structured output, we'll do better there as well. So let's see how this goes. Uh, but I will be running it in open router. The reason I'll be doing that uh, is just to speed it up. You'll see in the terminal here, it is running on my desktop as well. All right, so we're going to look at these four same areas again. Um, so last time we looked at tool usage, RAG, JSON, output, well, structured output, and vision. So we'll hit on all four of those again today and see how well this update does. All right, so looking here at tool usage. Let's see how this one goes. Uh, we will be using Open Router, as I explained in the last uh, slide, that, um, you know, it's just a little bit faster uh, than my desktop. You see it running on my desktop and everything works fine. It is going to be a little bit of a cheat because it's not quantitized or whatever that word is, so it might be a little bit better at this. So when we run this, we're going to see it using tools. And again, if we did heavy evaluation, we would probably do a better job of knowing how well it consistently used the tools. Um, but for right now, we're just going to settle for a quick run. Uh, and I mean, there's a lot of tools here for this guy to use. All these little spreadsheet things hanging off here are tools. So when we give it a run, it's going to have a URL and it should know to scrape data from a website. Uh, all right, let's give it a go. Um, keep in mind, too, that this particular model is supposed to be good at this type of agentic stuff. So if we had subagents uh, instead of just direct tools, it would, it would be just as good, maybe even better. Um, I think that was a newer feature before I did this build, so I could add the subagents uh, at another time and try this again. All right, it's looking pretty good. I mean, it used the tools and it was done. Um, I'm going to mark this as a win. So um, now we're going to try structured output in this particular workflow um, will really depend on it uh, because I have to structure the output a certain way like you see here to get it to the next step and make it all work. This is so key to almost all my workflows. When I originally tried a llama over here, it was before I had this particular option. So I will try that again because I'm curious now. So at this point, um, at this point, I could uh, just try it and see if that extra node helps or not, and then we'll see what happens. Yeah, see how it fails right there? So we can see that it needed the extra node. Now the extra node is using the GPT, so it's using its own model type to try to fix it, which is really cool. Uh, and then we get through it. Now I was just curious, so I put Olama back here, and let's see if that does it as well. So here we're going to run it again, and yeah, it ran and it made it with the same error. So, I mean, they're both working now, which is actually really key. Um, and, uh, you know, I really needed that because, again, structured output is so important to the work I do. All right, so I'm going to give that one a four, and then I'll bump up the other one to a four. I know N8N did a lot of the work um, in that it ran, uh, ran it again, and that's fine. That's just good prompting but it just was done with it again. All right, now for the rag one. And the tricky part here, it's not tricky, it's just good that we don't really need, it doesn't come with embeddings. <clears throat> and that's okay, we don't really need it. We already have this model that is perfectly fine in open weight or open source. So, you know, we're fine there. Now, the thing is, the thing is that uh, when we run this, we are gonna just trigger the chat and it becomes at this point uh, uh, about prompt and context. So the strengths of this model uh, are the strengths that basically most of these models have at this point, where if you give it good prompt and good context, it should be able to give you a decent answer. So we'll take, you know, we're getting good, good results here. 
Uh, and again, this all comes down to the system delivering in the right context, and then, of course, your prompt being good enough to keep it from hallucinating and then settings in place to, you know, keep the, um, the uh, temperature down. And like I said, this is a win. It's a, it's, a, it's a full five. I mean, we have a great rag system, but it really comes down to prompting and chunking and embedding. But we have a, a reliable uh, LLM that can really give good answers if we do all the rest well. All right, one more in its vision. And once again, we're left without really no solution here. And that's okay, because we already have a decent model for it with Mistral. So after we're done mixing and matching this new model, I think the results are going to be better overall. Um, but in this particular case, it just doesn't have an impact because it doesn't do multimodal. Uh, we can't send it a base 64 uh, or a PDF. Um, but I think they're really driving home the agentic stuff. All right, let's wrap it up with the score and then we'll review uh, just overall what the impact is with this new model. All right, so not much change there, as I mentioned. So we'll give this a uh, full five stars. Again, no loss, no negative dings, um, but we still end up with a great solution with these uh, open source or open weight models. All right, that's a quick look at using OSS GPT for our LLM. It slotted right in just like before when I did the other video. You get a lot more details there of how things work and what they're doing, but you can kind of see it just fitting in here. Uh, and again, just a good example of private LLMs and uh, local LLMs if you want. Um, and yes, I used Open Router. You know, I did that for speed and I just want to try it out. Um, so otherwise, we're, we're able to do it. Tools, agentic flows, RAG. I mean, there is no real reason I can see to not do it um, uh, if you're willing to put in that little extra work and invest some money if you have to run it locally and you invested in uh, hardware for that. Uh, all right, so remember to subscribe and I have a Substack link below where I just share some of the workflows and some other articles there uh, as time goes on so you can support me there as well. All right, thank you.